what they said. Coming up on today's show, Naomi shares her thoughts on friendship and instant attraction between partners in Naomi's wifey lifey. And in Lou's dating diary, she dishes the dirt on her most recent date and why ghosting is not big, nor is it very clever. We ask the big question, can men and women ever just be friends? We give an overview on what it's like to date a cancer. Are they really a tough nut to crack? Plus, we find out what happens on our perfect Perfect match. match couple's blind date. All that and more in today's show. Welcome to the show. Hey, Naomi. Hi, Louise. Oh, wowzers. I'm just like completely baffled and flabbergasted by yeah, the success that we've had. We've gone pleasantly surprised. We're pleasantly surprised. I mean, uh, we've gone global, which we're really shocked about, like, you know? And to our listeners in Bangladesh, in India, and... Uh, Wallace and Fatuna. Big up to Wallace and Fatuna. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we actually had to look that up on Google Maps. Yeah, look, I'll be honest. I didn't know where it was, but I'm definitely going there on my next holiday. Thank you so, so much for your listening. So let's get started on today's episode four. Let's get cracking. Wifey Lifey. So, so, how was your week? Another fantastic week. I've had such a busy week. <laughs> but that's expected. It's been hectic. There's never a quiet week. <laughs> this week, I wanted to actually touch on that interesting topic about when people say, did you have an attraction with him when oh, you first met? Well, like love at first sight or not? <laughs> you know, that that lightning strike, boom, thunder, boom, boom. Um, you know, like he is the one. Or is it a slow burn? Yeah. And, um, or the other thing is what what makes a good relationship? And I thought about it and it comes back to having a really strong friendship. So basically you're saying it, it's a slow burn in fairness, right? Because well, there just, has, well, there has to be some spark. Yeah. You can't yeah. have, you know, like still, you still trying want to, be to light to, the fire. Yeah. You still it want to be able to, to get into the pants and stuff, right? Like, <laughs> I can't say that on air. Can, can I? you? Yeah, you can. <laughs> my kids might be listening. <laughs> but um, so when my partner and I started chatting online, it was a really good banter to start off with. Yeah. So I knew that he had good humour. Good. We only chatted for two days. How did you know that though? Like, like he had good humour, was it? Oh, it was just so. So in my profile picture, right? I had that picture. Um, I don't know if you remember <laughs> from Halloween where we were dressed up and oh, I was, what? Yeah, <laughs> that one. <laughs> where I was like the devil. Yes. Oh, jeez. Yes. So you were waving your um, <laughs> yeah. <I'm, laughs> and you gotta and, go see it, and, folks, on yeah, City Friends. I think it's on there, isn't yeah. it? That picture. And I was waving my lightsaber. And it was it was just a funny it was a boomerang thing. Yeah. So my first comment when I actually saw him on Hinge was I and he on his dating profile he actually said he's got two black belts I think on in Taekwondo. What? And Does he? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that Try to attack it. him and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so. So on his dating profile, he said that he had a black belt in jiu-jitsu. No, two, two lots of black belts in something. Dang. I know, I know. <laughs> right? So my first comment to him was, okay, I won't be messing with you then. Yeah, I wouldn't either. <laughs> right? so that, was my, that was my first comment to him on, on Hinge. And he responded something like... <laughs> Yeah, because I have a picture of me in a Wonder Woman now. Oh, I, my days. I do love to dress up. <laughs> so, yeah, I love to dress up. You know, well. so I had that picture of me in my Wonder Woman outfit waving a lightsaber. So he came back and sort of like said, oh, well, it's just any man's dream, dream you know, to have a woman, Wonder Woman. <laughs> it's here, like meant to be. You guys can be like Cape Crusaders and go out and save like the people of Sydney or something. Like, you know. Save one lover at a time. <laughs> yeah, that's you know exactly <laughs> so then that sort of like started off that but really good banter yeah and so we ended up chatting for about two days so do you think that was like an instant attraction then but it was his humor because can you have an instant attraction for someone because they're funnier or does it have to be like looks or whatever well you know he is i, I find him good looking yeah because i looked no, at his profile yeah, yeah. and i thought oh i didn't have to bag the head <laughs> <laughs> 
If you're listening, Mr. Naomi <laughs> Ko, she doesn't really mean it. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> so you know, and I found him attractive. Yes. So, and and then there were all the that stuff that he actually put on his profile. So we started chatting, and you're going you're going to die because <laughs> I actually did. I'm already find- dying. <laughs> I didn't pay attention to the rules that I had and I did contact him after nine o'clock. What? Yeah, I know. I know. It wasn't a booty call. I was just going to say, like, no, it's, it's, no, it's, know, it's we, all coming out now, isn't it? It's like booty we, calls after two, like, <laughs> messages or whatever. It's just so, because he's a black belt and double black belt. <laughs> Take me down. Um, <laughs> But what happened? We haven't been drinking, by the way, or anything. (laughs) But I was staying in town for a Christmas party and I sort of like asked him, hey, do you want to go out dancing? And he initially said no because he was spending that evening hanging out with his daughter, but then she ditched him for her boyfriend. (laughs) So then he's like, well, okay, yep. So we went out dancing. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, didn't it? You never know, right? Yeah, you what? So we went out and we met up, we had a dance. Um, We talked a little bit and so there was some connection there. Yeah, chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. And as we started going out, there was a really strong friendship building. Yeah. We talked about a lot of things. So we've been together nearly two years. That's good, yeah. Yeah, time flies when you are having fun. fun. Exactly, yes. (laughs) And it's, it's been really good because we've been able to bring certain topics to the forefront for us to discuss. Yeah. And one of the biggest things that we've actually learnt is how to argue as well. Yeah. Because, of course, you're allowed to have different opinions. Absolutely. And, it's you know, you got to bring both elements of yourself. Yeah, provided you know? that I'm always right. Yeah. <laughs> You tell them. <laughs> and, and that's the important thing, right? Because we all come from different backgrounds yeah. and we have uh, – and how we argue or how we fight, I guess, yeah. is important. Um, and also how you kind of resolve that as that well, is, you know? That is probably the biggest thing. And I think – that is the other thing that we actually need to show our kids, yeah. that it is okay to have difference of opinions, to have um, arguments over certain topics, but how you actually resolve it. Yeah, and how you resolve fight. it. Yeah, no, absolutely. With my partners, ex-partners, I should say, look, I don't have partners now. <laughs> I'm single, okay? And one at a time. And one at a time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So, I mean, look, I'm monogamous. With my exes, like my son's dad, he's still my best friend. You know, um, he's I'm remarried. So yeah, yeah, I'm so impressed by that. Yeah, like people say we could write a book on how to co-parent and everything. Oh. Like, seriously, we still text each other every day about like, you know, music, about if, if a certain band's coming down and, and we just like have banter and we're, and his wife's absolutely lovely as well. Like, you know, and my most recent ex, we're still really good mates. We talk at least once or twice a week as well, just shooting the breeze, etc. And he gives and, like, you feedback on our And he gave me feedback on <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, on so this that's podcast. Good. And he loves it. So there you go. Um, I think it's important because, you know, you must have liked that person to want to be in a relationship with them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I go on Reddit quite a bit and I see on there, like, on their relationship, because they've got a lot of relationship advice. Um, and if it's on the internet, it must be true. Well, you know, but people <laughs> write, write in there saying, oh, I can't stand my wife, can't stand my husband, oh, da, 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 oh they've done this, hate them, I hate them. I'm like, whoa, Ooh. you know, that's a bit. There's one thing to sort of, like, hate them. You know? And then to air it out on the internet. To vent it out, like, you know, yeah. and, and, but then again, look, you know how much I love my true crime? <laughs> yes. I mean, you see all that sort of stuff there, right? Because yep. you, you get to a point where, you know, love and hate, right? Mm. And I think you need to be able to, you know, verbalise what it is that you want to say to someone, especially if you're feeling mm. angry, sad, or what have you. And it's like, I wouldn't want to go to bed at night being angry with my partner either. Yeah, I think that that's the other thing that I've learned to grow from as well because the person I was in my 20s when I did get married to my ex-husband and the person I was in my 30s is totally different to who I am now as well. Yeah. And some of the key learnings, I think, out of that relationship breakdown is actually being able to listen better. Mm Mm-hmm. And to be able to accept that certain things you can't control yeah, and have Im- improved communications. And, and my biggest thing is not going to bed yeah. angry yeah. because my biggest fear. What was that? Die in the morning. You've been I know. In- <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm like, I know. Because <laughs> I think that there's, then there's all this regret and yeah. unresolved anger 
that you never got to say yeah. sorry to that person or you never got to... And they get to say the last word. Oh, yeah, that would, that <laughs> yeah. would be annoying. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm, I'm scared of that. Yeah, look, I may be joking around and stuff because I'm trying to make it a bit lighthearted. It's true, though. I'm the same. I'm a bit of an overthinker, right? And I'm like, oh, did I hurt that person? If they And if you don't ever have that opportunity to resolve it, then, yeah, that will just burn me to, you know... Yeah, and... Um, the other thing about not resolving something before you go to bed is that you don't end up with a restful night's sleep. Yeah, I do toss and turn. I'm and sitting I, there thinking about stuff, yeah. yeah. And I am a bit vain, so I need to have vain. my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> my beauty sleep. Beauty sleep. <laughs> yeah, initial attraction is, you know, something that we all... C- should have, especially because, you know, you want to be able to fancy the pants off your partner. But I do genuinely think, yeah, mutual respect and, yeah, that friendship yeah, is, so, is important too. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the famous relationship psychologist, Dr. Godman, said that long-term vitality and connection is maintained through moments of intentional friendship. Ooh. So we actually have to work a little bit harder in becoming or, or maintaining that friendship with our partners. Okay. Yeah. Now that makes a lot, a lot of sense. When you're looking at Tinder and stuff and, and swiping through the apps, it's not just about, ooh, he's fit, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, you know. or, <laughs> and, yeah, but, but it, do you think that that person can be your friend? Friend. Yeah. Think about it, okay? Lou's Dating Diary. So, Lou, I've been waiting um, this whole week. <laughs> to hear about your latest date what about this festival <laughs> yeah, you made me laugh it's like the festival you go to a fest- festival I, I think I said it quite a few times yeah, just to make sure that you were actually going to a fe- festival incredulous you were <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so if you listened to last week's episode, you would have heard that, yeah, that night I was going to um, a Latin festival. Festival. With, um, <laughs> with CEX. Did you get to shake your bonbon? You know, look, you know how I said it's probably going to be a dumpster fire? <laughs> it was a dumpster fire. Oh, it no. was a dumpster fire in a train wreck, in a plane crash, in a burning house. Um so met up with him and look, he seemed loved. He was tall, right? He was super tall. He was like, okay, so he didn't lie four. about his, his nah, height. he didn't lie about his height, which was lovely. He, didn't, he looked exactly like how he looked. Another tick. Another tick. Everything was fine. Going to this Latin festival, which was, it looked fabulous. It was full of colour. It was like people were dancing. Yeah. Music was going. And I thought, this is great. And um, so we go and get some drinks, which we, we go and get some drinks. Yes. <laughs> and then, <clears throat> we bring our drinks out. Yep. It's standing room only. And everyone's like moving around and swaying. So I'm, so I thought I'm going to like just sway around and dance whilst, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm talking yeah. to You've got to show your, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but not only that, it's not because I'm trying to, you know, peacock and show my moves or anything because <laughs> I've got no moves, trust me, right? <laughs> um, because it's, you know, everyone's dancing. That's what you do, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're trying to blend. Trying to blend in, with right? With the crowd, yeah. Exactly. And he said to me, Oh, you don't stand still, do you? I mean, is that all you, you know, do you like dogs? Yeah, it just made me feel so awkward. <gasps> that would have made you feel so self-conscious. Yeah, he goes, oh, I can't believe you're um, wanting to dance to this. It's like, What you did know, he expect from a festival? That's what I thought. Thank you. That's what I thought. I thought maybe. I mean, if I was it was like, a what? date at the library, <laughs> it would you have know? been different. Well, what else, a museum or something? Like, it's, yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> but he actually said, um, oh, you're really energetic. You know, it's like you can't stand still. I'm like, I said, well, they're playing loads of music and everyone else is dancing. <laughs> I got rhythm, baby. I got to shake them. <laughs> and, uh, and it just went downhill from there. And then we started... Was um, it your suggestion to do the festival? No, God, oh, no. Right, right, it was okay. his suggestion to do this festival. Okay, all right. You know, yeah, there was other things which I'm not going to go into because it's not really fair, yep, you know, yep. like... So that happened. And then we, we decided to have um, some food. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, and he's not a food sharer. No, we no, we did. We shared we shared some food, which, okay. which he got, which was lovely. And then we just talked about dates and stuff. And then he heard that we were do, do, obviously doing this podcast, etc. And basically, I was giving him a lot of advice. Oh, in- <laughs> so you, you were t- giving him some of your loose dating diary advice? advice yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that, so that happened. Did you uh, charge for the consult? I should have done. <laughs> I should have done. Look, lovely, lovely guy. Um, obviously, just wasn't for me. Um, I left the date, you know, after a, an hour and a half or so. Yep. Yep. Um, but that point, you know, that that, mo- that day we were uh, we were Latin dancing that day anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Latin yeah. dancing class, um, and I went home and I was like, 
no, that ain't going to happen again. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought yeah. I'm going to text him and say, look, had a lovely evening, but I think, you know, I, I, I only got a friendly vibe from you. Um, and, and that was it. So you friend zoned him? <laughs> Completely. I think he friend zoned me after saying, you know, I think you're too energetic. I'm like, well, yeah, you know, it wasn't like I was doing cartwheels or like, you know, went that and done a, been me. got on stage and done the Lombardo or something, Ooh, you know. That, like, that might have given him a different vibe. Well, the vibe, I was, I was shuffling my feet and that still gave him... You know, break dancing, <laughs> mental vibes. But hey, so the um, thought was there, the idea was there to do an activity for a day. Yes, the execution maybe not so. No, yeah. So, so that's that, okay. <laughs> so there you go. So that so that's happened, and um, yeah. But I wish him all the best. And uh, there you go. I alluded to it last week about ghosting. <laughs> yes, and 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 we did <sighs> say yeah we needed to call in the Ghostbusters. Yes, because if you read my dating diary from oh, Sydney friends from Sydney friends on I write, our Facebook group. On, yeah, on the Facebook group, I, re- I write a lot on there about my dating escapades, etc. And I wrote on there about. Someone called the artist who the artist I had quite high hopes for. Yes, you did. You Everyone did. had high hopes oh, for. We all did because you know you're Everyone's... so artistic. Yeah, <laughs> in, in the no in yeah. the in the in the creative side. Yeah, and so when you were speaking to him, yes. we were like, oh, we were captured. You know, captured. Everyone was like looking at buying hats and things. You know, I mean, everyone was just like. But anyway, right? So he he was away. On yes. holes for two weeks. I think I alluded to this on episode one. Yep. And so you or, were chatting. Or episode two or something like that. It was, yeah, yeah, so yeah, one you of were chatting episodes. for a while and he was on holiday. He was on holiday for two weeks and I was still like, oh, okay, cool, you know, fine. And then obviously that time I got COVID. Yep. Um, the C so I got, word. The C word. I got COVID a few weeks ago. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so I couldn't do anything. Couldn't even see my son or anything. So we were planning to meet up on a date on that Wednesday. So I messaged him and said, I'm really sorry. I just got, I've got COVID. I'm really, really sick. So can we rain check or we can do a, a, a call or a video call or something? Yep. And he messaged me back saying, oh, no, I prefer to meet in person and promptly unmatch me. <gasps> unmatched you. After he said, after you saw that message, he unmatched you. Yeah, he just unmatched you. Just boom, boom, ghost, Go like, on. Ghostbusters. <laughs> you know, like, I, I was like, wow. wow. So, you know, just went, so was that, is that really ghosting or is that just that, that, you know, is that Speedy Gonzalez? Is this like Roadrunner? Is this yeah, like, oh, you know. yeah, we, we could sort of like trademark a new name, a dating thing called Roadrunner. Roadrunner. <laughs> yeah, but ghosting is a huge issue into the dating world. It is. I mean, you can be having um, a, such a good chat. And yep. then, and, and it's all great and all gravy and all beautiful and stuff. And then you go back on the app and then there's crickets again. You just don't do that to people, especially when you just don't know what, what you've done. I've, I've, I've I mean, you read through your texts. I oh, mean, you're like, did I say something? Oh, you did I say something to offend? But I, I did have a lot of ghosts, um, you know, when I was dating. Caspers. Yeah, a lot of Caspers. <laughs> um, and we, there was one particular one that I do remember. We had really great conversations online. We even spoke on phone. We um, had a date for, for our first date, and he was, you know, um, asked me out to dinner, which I yeah. thought was very, very nice. nice. yeah. Civilised. So, so I thought, you know, um, it would be nice to just sort of like, a, well, maybe do you want to have a meet and greet earlier? So we did. We had a meet and greet, and it was, again, very pleasant. We had good conversations. Um, at the end of the date, he even said to me, I'll see you on Friday. So I thought, okay, nice. beautiful. Nice, yeah. Then I don't hear anything. What? A plague of cricket. Yeah. I was really confused because we were chatting for a, a couple, you know, like messages on regular messages. We had a meet and greet. Yeah. We confirmed a second date. Wow. And then there were like nothing from Monday to, to Thursday or Friday. That, wow. So then I'm thinking, so then that, the actual hell. Yeah. Like, I'm just <laughs> like, I made sure I wore deodorant that day. <laughs> So, yeah, like, you know, you know I'm like, so I knew that something happened between Monday and, and you were actually hoping that he actually dropped dead, didn't you? Or oh. died or, or, or broke his leg or something. I had a great so, excuse you for know, this, like right? fell into one of those holes around Sydney, what you know, that's <laughs> um, like a manhole, like, yeah, yeah, something, yeah, yeah, or something. But it, and so I was like, well, is the date on? Mm. Do, do I get ready and like what's going it, on it's sort of like 
and so I made I ended up making the first step and I contacted him and I said, Hey, is something happening on Friday? Are we still catching up? Um and then he messaged back and he said, Oh, I'm I am sorry, I ghosted you, blah blah blah. But then that was it. So we but, were meeting up again. But yeah, so hang on a minute. A he said, Sorry, I ghosted you, and then <laughs> again. And then disappeared then again. Speedy Gonzalez, yeah, Roadrunner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and then so then I've got I had oh, some of man. those. And sometimes I feel like I'm on episode like of the movie Friday Thirteenth or something because <laughs> you get ghosts, yeah, and then sometimes they reappear like zombies. There was one, no word of a lie, right? Two years, two years, two years. I, I, there was one person after two years came back round and and to me and and said, "So what do we call and, them? Do um, we call them zombies? So it could, yeah, or boomerangs? Ma- boomerangs? Oh, I can boomerangs. Um, you know, living dead or something. But <laughs> you know, it just pops up, popped around and went, um, "Hey, sup? Like no, like, <laughs> just like, just yeah, like, how are you? <laughs> just Yo. like you can pick up. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't in- even, I didn't even respond." Oh, yeah. But because how do you respond? Yeah, like, you know, you can't just pick up the conversation like from last time. I mean, yeah. Well, you Maybe know. we could come back and say, are you an astronaut? Did you go to space for two weeks? And- <laughs> well, yeah, do you die? And then, yeah, come back to life. Are you are you really a zombie? Yeah, yeah. like, so uh, I never understood that phenomenon. I think that people, if you're not interested in someone. Yes. Be up for them. I mean, look, as I said, in, as I alluded to, I think in episode two, I said, I did that once upon a time ago because I was I was younger and you know and sometimes I just wanted to stick my head in the ground and not like face it but you you got to pull that band-aid off you got to, you know own it if you don't like someone because it's not fair on them just treat people I keep saying this how many times have I said this just treat people how you want to be treated people yeah and uh, and I stop I, it I remember somebody saying you know if it's it's a bit like ice cream flavor if you if you don't like chocolate, just yeah. say I'm I'm not after chocolate and, and I prefer vanilla. Or and that's the same with people as well. Like if you yeah. don't uh, make that connection, just let them know. Just so let that- them know. Just say, look, I'm really sorry. Um, met you. Yeah, you know, we had this chat. Uh, you know, whatever. But you know, wish you all the best. Thank yeah. you. Leaving you know? people hanging. Yeah, just is tra- really unfair. So once again, people, the listeners of what they said, men and women. Yonder, all out there. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Question of the week. Can men and women be friends, Lou? That is the question. I mean, that is a loaded question right there. Look, I think I think you definitely can because most of my bestest friends mm-hmm. are all male. Yeah. And they have been. Even from when I was like 17, my best friend growing up was a bloke. Mm-hmm. I'm still in contact with him there. I have another good friend of mine um, back home in London as well, who we worked together for a very long time. Um, and he's also my son's godfather. You know, there's that. And even here, like I, I said it earlier, I'm still best friends with my exes. And I've got really good male mates here too. So I say you, it can. So you're not like... From that famous movie <laughs> when Harry met Sally, well, look, the scene on the train where it, Harry explains to me, where well, well, he did try to ask her out first. Oh yeah, you know, do you want to go out for dinner? And she's like, dinner. And he's like, as friends. And she says, but I thought you don't believe in <laughs> men and women being friends. Yeah, but did he say that before he asked her out to? For dinner then, because obviously and, he must and, have had a... And then he sort of like, you know, backtracked and sort of like said, oh, yes, men and women can be friends, you know, if they're dating other people. The what? <laughs> I know. I've, you definitely can be friends. I mean, unless you've got a ulterior motive, like, you know how you do get some guys and they're called nice guys, you mm-hmm. know, the Mr. Nice Guy? Yeah, yeah. And they're the ones who, they're all nice to you just because they think, if I am, I'll be in with a shot. And then so, it's, you know. So what do you think are the challenges around men and women being friends? I think if you've got a partner already, I know some people don't like you being mates with with the opposite sex. It could be your boyfriend not wanting you to be friends with another guy, or you could be the girlfriend not wanting him to be friends with other women. That's on you, you know. You're putting, you're projecting your kind of untrustworthiness or whatever insecurities, insecurities. And because they're with you man yeah so I guess defining the relationship whether it's platonic friendship mm. or or you shag them I think 
I th- it, it all depends on what that ulterior motive is. Like, I'm quite trustworthy. If I if I genuinely want to be friends with you, I say, look, I want to be friends with you. You know, and that includes being a friend and phoning people to hang out. Yeah, right. And saying, "Hey, how are you? What are you doing?" It doesn't necessarily mean I want to shag you. Mm. Yeah, and I'm sure there's men out there going, "You know what? What she's saying is true, man." I asked like my coworker like, if she wanted to just like hang out, and she thought I was gonna like, you know, I wanted to jump her bones. And it's and he's like, "I just want to be a mate." Mm. And it goes both ways, you know. Well, when we're I guess when we're at primary school and and high school and even uni, you do end up having a lot of friends of the opposite sex. Yeah. And that was okay. Yeah, you know? of course like, it was. And, yeah. and, and I think so many people get more out of life if they have friends. Diversity, the op- yeah. people. <laughs> With the opposite sex. I think that you get so many more advantages. If I were to ask some of my girlfriends opinions on something, they will give me a, a certain opinion that I'll be like, yeah, you know, because it's my way of thinking. So I'm a female. Mm. But sometimes it's good to get a man's point of view. I, like, oh, if, totally. For example, oh, he hasn't messaged me. He hasn't texted me yet. And so I'll, I'll call up one of my guys and I'm like, why hasn't he texted me? Oh, you're a guy. <laughs> Let me know. Tell me. Oh, well, yeah. Like, I mean, I remember because I grew up in, in a family of three girls and I went to an all girls high school. So I had like really strong female friendships and stuff. And there were certain things, like you said, sometimes you know how men can sometimes just look like they're thinking and then you say, what are you thinking? Yeah. And they go, oh, nothing. And you go. You must have been. Yeah, of course you have to be. How can you think of nothing? And when we, when I, when we actually talked about that with my brother-in-law, he said, when men actually say they're not thinking of anything, they're actually not, not thinking, thinking of anything. Yeah. And I think. And Contemplating. That, they're just, just lay, you know, sitting there, just chill, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, whereas women talk a lot about their feelings, they share their emotions, yeah. they process it, and they vent a lot with their girlfriends. Exactly. We want it, We want an answer. And, and if go, you're having problems with, you know, a boyfriend or a partner, and when you're sharing it, the story, you want your girlfriends to hate on him or, you know, like take your side too, right? Yeah, like no, I, do. I, mean, I don't want them to hate. I, 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 me Maybe I think more like a because you know there's some females that think like more like a male. Like pro, I'm very logical. I, mm. I, even still, I want to get down to the you know whys and, yep. and ask the question stuff. But um, I gen- it comes from a genuine place where I'm like, what is he thinking? What is it? You know, not because I want to get one up on him or anything. And when I speak to guys now, that when I say what do you guys talk about, they literally sit there and go uh, and you know. Actually, what we should do is get some guys on here. And I think get that their, would be a great idea. Get their, let's not, um, let's not uh, hypothesise. No, you know, exactly. Let's get some men views. <laughs> men of views. Men of views. Yeah, because men are from Mars and women are from Venus, right? I know, right? I mean, but going back to the topic in hand, you know, again, it's going back to that nice guy thing. And even there's nice girls out there as well. Oh, if I, if I just stay to be his friend, I'm in his orbit all the time, mm. right? Maybe he or she will start what liking if? me. Fancy me. What if there is an attraction, but the other person doesn't feel? Huh? Is, it, is that un- unrequited love? Maybe. Could um, you still be friends with somebody like that? Or two people who are attracted to each other, but they think. Well, like Harry, <laughs> Harry and Sally, you know that movie. But they think, okay, we've, we've got such a, a strong good friendship. friendship that if we go down this path and it doesn't work. You might mess it up. Will it mess it up? Look, I think if you've got a strong attraction to each other, I think you should explore it. You only live once. Because isn't there that movie, My Best Friend's Wedding? Oh, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Because she was like, it was her best friend and but stuff. But didn't they, didn't they get together? Yes, yeah, see, they, and then but broke somebody else's heart. Was yeah, it Cameron yeah, yeah. Diaz? Yeah. She in it? I don't know. Oh. But anyway, right? <laughs> but then, so I think you should just act on it. And, you know, if you were good friends... It should withstand that, right? Again, it's going back to what we were talking about in your section, Naomi. Mm. If you're, you know, if that, if you truly cared for the well-being of your friend, mm-hmm. you would, even if it doesn't work out, you would still, still be, be friends. At, yeah, and still think about, you know, how they feel. Okay, let me throw another question at you. How about society hating on men and women friendship? Do we get that on mums' Facebook groups? They'll, you know, write under anonymous. Yeah. Do you, you know, oh. I've um, just started dating with this guy and he's really good friends with his ex. Should I have any fears? And there'll be 
probably an equal divide. Some people will say, oh, it's really good that he's, got friend, he's friends with his ex. Oh, and then the other side, oh, there could be some unresolved emotions. You're obviously listening to this. You didn't see me just hang my head down and, and, and just go, boy. Right? Oh. And again, I alluded to this in um, Naomi's section. I am still best good friends with my son's dad. He mm. is remarried. Now, his wife is absolutely brilliant, gorgeous, and, you know, and secure in herself. They are together. They are madly in love. And so she's so self-assured, which is the best thing. She doesn't see me as a threat because I'm not a threat. Yeah. You know? And do you think that it's because you've actually established those really clear boundaries right from the beginning? Um, I think so. But it's also because my son's dad is also a good guy. And, and put, I think it's down to him to put, say, look... That's the mother of my child. We are still good mates. And there's nothing there. Yep. You know? Mm. And, and how he acts to her is, I think, indicative of her feeling, you know what? I've got nothing to worry about. So sometimes it's not the other woman that you should be worried about or, you know, like, oh, you shouldn't be friends with her because blah, blah, blah. Or you shouldn't be friends with your ex, etc. Mm. That ex probably doesn't even want anything to do with that person. Yeah. I mean, I have no romantic feelings towards yeah. towards my son's dad like you know it's but for me he i will always have his back right Mm-mm. i think it's that kind of scenario there that ground where people are ambiguous and don't understand or, or whatever and sometimes i do think it's not necessarily the two women or the two men mm. um, because sometimes it is you know a guy yeah. who's you know a girl who's like friends with another guy and the guy's like be friends with him you know it can work both ways i think it's down to that commonality the man or the woman with those exes and how they act. Because if they're still all flirty, dirty, or trying it on with their ex, then they've got a problem, I think, right? I think and that's the biggest thing, right? Like, it's the language that is shared yes. when those parties are around. If it is respectful, if and there are clear boundaries that it is just friends mm-hmm. having a good laugh, then it's yeah. no problems. It's when, the, like you said, the, the inappropriate language or flirting, that's probably unwanted. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, if, if you have, and this is both males and females, Say you say you're the one who broke it up, right? You're, and that ex is still madly in love with you and what have you. Give it time, all yeah. right? Do not go, you know. We just split up. I'm gonna be still be the best mate. I'm still gonna go and fix their car and uh, and fix their washing machine and, and, and still hang out and do movies with them because you're also giving the, that ex the wrong message. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So if especially if you're the person who broke up mm-hmm. and the other person wasn't emotionally ready yeah. and then you're just sort of like, Oh, let's still be friends and you're back and forth, it is it can be it can blur the lines. It could blur the lines and it wouldn't be fair on the, your other person, on your new person, right? Yep. And then that other new person has a right to go, Well, hang on a minute. You, you what know, is that, going on? Yeah, what's going on? That girl or boy is still in, in love with you. Yep. And you're you're kinda leading them on. Okay, let's say men and women can actually be friends. They can be friends. I reckon <laughs> okay. they can be friends. Are there any off limits discussion? Like, what do you mean? Like, like, know. would you talk to him about relationship problems? Yes, and I have done. And I'm sorry to my most recent ex. <laughs> but no, but my most recent ex knows that, right? Yeah, and I'll be honest. Yep. And like, and um, and it's good because, as I said, I see him. As one of my best friends, he, yep. I have his back. He has my back. It's not because I'm, you know, pardon my French, bitching about my um, ex, my my boyfriend or the person that I'm dating or whatever. I just want to get his perspective, perspective on his opinion because he knows me. You know, of course, it's like when you're um, speaking to your other good friends, you would ask for their opinion and advice, right? Mm. And I do that. It's not about I want to sleep with them or get in their pants or anything. It's because I va- they are my friends yep. and I value their opinion. You just hit the nail right on the head there that getting the um, male or the female perspective is enlightening. Yeah, absolutely. And we've had a lot of men who've actually given us feedback on our podcast as well. Oh, my gosh, yes. And just <laughs> some of the stuff that they've actually said, oh, I didn't realise women would we're doing that. It's, it's, it's eye-opening. It is, it is. And sometimes uh, that's where a lot of miscommunication happens, uh, misunderstandings. Mm-hmm. It's just purely because we could be saying one thing and I know sometimes my dialogue in my head would have gone different. five steps ahead 
and created my own scenario when that's not true. Yeah. And it's, it is about getting that um, feedback and that reality check. And sometimes the people that can give you that reality check is the people that have known you for mm. forever. There's a lot of mention about cross-sex friendships. I don't know how everything has to be labelled, but um, online they call it cross-sex friendships and that's when, you know, men and women can be friends, you know, so they, they show that it is more emotionally rewarding for you and for your personal growth if you do have friends, not just men or women, but across the board. Yeah. See, guys, so look, take it from us. It is well worth having male friends. I mean, at the end of the day, if you need to, you know, someone to open that jar, <laughs> you can't, <laughs> who else are you going to get to open it? I mean, come on now. Star-crossed <laughs> lovers. Okay, so this week we're going to talk about cancer. We are, yes. And I'm interested to know because my partner's cancer. <laughs> you should know a lot then. And it's been two years, so I need to ask our resident astrologist, <laughs> Louise, can you give me more info? Is it too late to back out? <laughs> Give me the lowdown. Right? The, the lowdown on cancerians. Now, cancerians are really, really, really sensitive. With cancerians, you know how, like, you know, the, a cancer, the star sign is a crab, a right? Crab. And basically, they are very slow moving, usually. Oh, that explains. <laughs> so, yeah, they're very slow moving. And the reason why they're very slow moving is because they are genuinely very sensitive and they're scared, right? They're like, they all, you know how you get to see a crab and they poke the head out and as I say, it's the world all right. It's, am I not going to get eaten or nothing, right? Like, is it okay to come out type thing? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Um, that's what they are. And you know what? They want to go out there and experience stuff, right? They really do and, and take the plunge, etc. But sometimes they feel that oh no it something can go wrong right <laughs> you know, okay. it's like oh if I do this yeah or if I try this or if I take a leap of faith sometimes you know this it, it, it can go wrong why why should I try it out right? so <laughs> when, a when I'm bit more conservative they're very con- they're, they're conservative but deep down they want to do it but they're <laughs> like so sometimes they need someone um, who can take them out of their shell. And here comes me. Yeah, that, like like no me over here, right? With her <laughs> cancerian. They are very, very family orientated. Yeah, he um, is. And that's both men and women. They're very, very close to their mothers, especially. Mm-hmm. Um, especially cancerian he men. He might actually say something about that now because I'm really good friends with her now. Oh, there you go, <laughs> right? See? So, yeah, they are very, very close um, to their families, especially their mothers. They love being at home. Right. I mean, they, they, one of the big things that cancerians um, do, I mean, yeah, they would like to go out maybe potentially if somebody calls them up at 9.30 of the evening and invite them out for a dance. But usually, usually um, they like staying at home, cooking food, you know, hanging out there uh, yeah. in the, you know, the creature comforts at, mm-hmm. at, at home. Cancerian men are generally, they're very shy. Even the most good looking guys, right? You could see, you, you think, oh, he's pretty fit and he could have anyone in the planet yeah yeah but when they like you they're like super duper shy right they oh. are pretty like kind of like oh you know and, and then they all act all kind of coy and and and, and you're just like huh so if you're talking to a cancerian man or woman and you see them usually they're like you know pretty self-assured with everyone else and then they come up to you and they're all like proper tongue-tied and say stupid things and all a bit all that shy and awkward and stuff you never know they might actually want to come out of their shell for you okay? i just thought he was in awe of me <laughs> <laughs> that too naomi and that too perfect match Welcome back, Anthony. And Mary. <laughs> How Hi was your guys. days? <laughs> How are we? Yeah, grand. Like, you know. So, obviously, we're here at the lovely Bella Vista Hotel. And, uh, yeah, have you ever done anything like this before? Certainly not me. <laughs> <laughs> not me either. No, never been on a blind date in my life. Oh, really? We're popping a lot of cherries recently. Oh, we are, aren't we? <laughs> 
<laughs> and what were some of your first impressions of each other? Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> go on, there. Ladies go on. first. <laughs> well, Anthony was very late. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's Sorry, usually my that's e-bike. usually my thing to be late. So, but anyway, um, no, it was great. It, he's a lovely, lovely man. First impressions, great, nice looking. If that's the first impression, um, and then personality, we've we've gotten on he's really, going really well. Red. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been very, very nice so far. Even though we've been very rushed. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. And uh, Anthony, what about yourself? Well, you didn't know what to expect, did I you? I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> no, I didn't. And I'm glad that I actually got to meet Mary. Um, oh, I was I was a little bit sort of taken back, <laughs> to be honest with you. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> she was very pretty. Oh, look, this is so sweet. Oh. And it wasn't what I was expecting, what Naomi was saying. <laughs> So she was a human with two legs. Well, well, she was well, actually was, real. She was actually real. <laughs> and you, you wanted the goss and I didn't give it to you this week. Oh. Yes. Yes. It's no. supposed to be she secret. Did yes. She did actually. She, oh, actually what? Me, she sent me photos. <laughs> no, she didn't. No. And what was the general day? I mean, you obviously ordered loads of food and I know we rushed you into the said podcast studio to with do your this. food. With your food. I mean, how was it? How did the conversation flow? Yeah, really well. Really, really well. Um, I think, um, as we were discussing before and as you guys talked about Librans, um, we did chat a lot. We have four Librans in the room. Um, yeah, it was really, really good. Um, conversation flowed um, and will continue to flow because we will be exiting this uh, podcast studio and continue with our date. <laughs> well, it's rudely uh, yes. interrupted. Yes, yes. because you, you've got loads of <laughs> Wogs, what do you expect? <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, really, really good conversation. We've really only just scratched the surface because, you know, normally with the online dating, you get a little bit of a uh, background on the person, but this is starting from scratch drama. So right from the get-go, um, even knowing what each other's name is and um, <laughs> how old we are and where we live, which is normally something that you'd um, obviously uh, already have established yeah. before a date. No, so, yes. And Anthony, how was the, the date? How's the food so far? Yes, I know you've only had about two calamaris, <laughs> but... <laughs> Let me take another bite. <laughs> <laughs> The food is delicious. The food is actually quite good. Yes. yes. Well yeah, done, Bella nice. Vista Hotel. Yes, yes again. Bella Vista Hotel. Amazing. <laughs> Never yep. been here before, but I will come back. Yay, yeah, there yeah. you go. What, the big question? Yep. Will there be a date number two? I think so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Why? Decision has Excuse been me made. whilst I why? fall off my chair. Why not? <laughs> why not? You know? Yeah. 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 Give it a little bit more of a relaxed atmosphere. Yes. <laughs> not so a rushed pressured. one. Yes. 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 No, yes. absolutely. Not when yeah. uh, midway through the date uh, you get called to come in for an interview yes. and yeah. then – We've got to do this now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and following us while we drag your plates in here. Thank you ever so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Yes. yes. Thank you, girls. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Anthony. And Thank thanks for being such good them. sports with it all. Hey, yes, we've not a problem. Could be daring in life, I think. Well yes. done. Yeah. Give it a go, everybody else that's listening, absolutely. And procrastinating and thinking about yes. it. Just do it, okay? Just do it. And <laughs> fill in our form. Yes. We did have some really good questions. You yes. did. Scientific. How are my answers? <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't know how you analysed it all, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's here we go deep. We yeah, go deep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks again, guys, and uh, go off and enjoy the rest of your food. We will. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, girls. Bye. Thanks. Bye. And that's a wrap for this week's show. I know. What a jam-packed episode that was. I know I say that every week, but it's true. <laughs> Honestly, today's topics were deep. They were deep. And next week, look, we've got another episode which is going to be full of cool stuff as well. You're going to let us in on what is the three-month rule in Wifey Lifey. And you're going to share with us on your dating diary about how important it is to be truthful. Yeah, so stop your lies, okay? We ask the big question, how can we spot a romance scammer? And we'll give an overview of what it's really like to be dating a Pisces. And do still waters really run that deep? And um, plus we'll find out at what happens to our newest perfect, perfect match, match couple. couple. All that and more next week. Bye. See ya. Thanks for 
listening to What They Said, recorded at the Hills Podcast and Video Room, located at Bella Vista Hotel. Editing by Chris Waluski. Music by Danny Muller. Content written and produced by Naomi Chow and Louise Palmer.